Hello everyone, welcome to our Palo Alto studios in California. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. This is a CUBE conversation with Jason Zintek, CEO of Sixth Sense. This is part of our next gen conversation series. We talk about the technologies and the news and the people making it happen for the next generation, technologies, clouds, and solutions. Jason, welcome to theCUBE conversation. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, happy to be here. So you guys are, got some news. So you got, a couple weeks ago, you announced $40 million in funding. Um, which we'll talk about, I want to get that out right away. But I think more importantly, we're seeing a trend where this next gen blank is happening. You know, I'm watching just the Super Bowl, next gen stats is for NFL, you got next gen cloud, you got next gen data. The world of the technology is kind of shifting to a new architecture. You're starting to see visibility into what this next gen looks like. Your company is squarely in the middle of this next gen sales and marketing platform yep. solutions in the, new, in the new model, cloud scale, data first, this is a core major shift and it's a huge market. Look at Salesforce, look at all these companies that have been around. They're incumbents now, you're the new guard. Yeah, yeah. Tell us, what's going on with you guys? Sure, um, well you're right, we just raised $40 million, it's our Series C uh, from Insight Partners. Um, went through a lengthy evaluation process and compete and happy to uh, have announced that uh, last month. And uh, as far as next generation, you're correct. I mean, we, I grew up in a world of uh, email platforms and then big data platforms, uh, marketing automation, and this is a data first strategy where we allow, we now have compute power uh, that allows us to process huge amounts of data sets. Uh, so it's our belief that it should all be data first and driven from AI and ML on top of data that drives a next generation marketing tactic or a sales tactic, an email or a display ad. And yeah. What's interesting is that you mentioned um, you've been worked in the previous old school technology, you were a CEO of Responsys, which was sold to Oracle. That was a great wave that brought in the marketing technology stack. We saw the sales and marketing solutions from salesforce.com, obviously. That was the first wave that you were part of. Now the new wave is going to that next level. Mm -hmm. This is really the fundamental shift, and it's, it's, and it's not so much they're being replaced, but they're just being abstracted away with new capabilities, in some cases being replaced. What's the core problem that customers are having, or the core problem that you're solving? Because some of these old solutions can't scale. Sure. Some of them are because they're big, but what's the core problem in the industry? Uh, the core problem is that these systems were designed to be contact first, or lead first. Uh, and as you know today, no one likes an abundance of emails in their inbox, and so, uh, companies have said, hey, I want to have a relationship with my customer or prospect. I want it to be a cycle of engagement, an infinity loop, uh, which means we don't blast emails, we monitor a relationship, what that's like, how we might engage, and the data allows us to do that. We can see what's going on with the activity, and, and based on that engagement, uh, AI tells us what tactic might be the most appropriate, which is actually send less, but more effective and more targeted. So it's a data-driven approach, it's an account-based focus uh, in B2B world, as opposed to uh, old generation, which is lead, uh, and actually rule-based. Um, so we, we used to write these, call them journey maps, uh, these if-then statements, which were manual. And the second we got you know, done doing weeks of if-then statements, they become stale. And so now data helps us, and AI helps us understand real-time behavior with intent, and then the tactic. Love the name Sixth Sense. Obviously, you, you want to get the, a sense of what's going on around you. Six degrees of separation, you got network effect. We're seeing a new reality, and that is organic, kind of user experience is different happening outside the funnel, sometimes inside the funnel, as, as they talk about in the sales and marketing. But users at the end of the day, they're downloading Brave browser, they don't necessarily want the ads, and, and so they're making these uh, decisions based on their experience that they want. So this is changing some of the tactics. Absolutely. So talk about that dynamic, because the old way was based on, you know, see an ad, click on it, go to a landing page, get a lead, throw it in the funnel, matriculate down, sell them something and time's not on your side, it's not real time. Yeah. It's slow, antiquated, inadequate. Exactly What's right, so, so uh, if you look at Forrester or Gartner, they'll give you stats that 80% of the sale, B2B sales cycle is done anonymously today, meaning they don't want to contact the vendor. There's an abundance of data uh, on the web, and so we appreciate that. Um, we want to actually enable an engagement through learning. Uh, we call it the actual dark funnel. I mean, this is all the research where it's happening without the vendor being contacted, without uh, someone raising their hand and saying, I, I, want, a, I want a vendor message. Uh, because of this activity that we're able to see and, and uh, be patient with, we're allowed to engage when the prospect or customer says they want to, uh, but in a nurture format, so it's more respectful of their time. And all the while, this engagement idea is we're, we're giving them content when they want it, when it's on demand, and when it's appropriate. And there's all kinds of new data laws coming, so you got to navigate that kind of regulatory environment. 
But you know, we've been sitting on the queue, which is our 10th year, and you know, you know the old way, and now we've got a new way that you're on with your company, is that people are connected. Everything can be instrumented. This is mm -hmm. the big data uh, uh, re revelation that started about 10 years ago, mm -hmm. when the big data movement, when people said, hey, data's going to be a big part of it. But with the internet, everyone's kind of connected, so you can technically measure everything. Yeah. So, as a company, how do you look at data? I mean, data is fundamental to your vision mm -hmm. and your execution. How is that ingrained into the culture and your product? Uh, good question. And and first, I'd like to say we we uh, respect privacy in, in the data and personal and, and company. So we are you know GDPR compliant, uh, SOC two, CCPA, um, the new California laws, as you know. Uh, and, and that is uh, part and parcel to our strategy, respect it. Uh, but at the same time, you know, today's consumers generally want to be known in some way, shape, or form because they understand the experience of engagement, whether it's an account or an individual customer. Uh, the experience is that much richer if it's personalized and done with taste, mm -hmm. um, meaning it, it's not spam, it's not a thousand emails. It's, it, it's a meaningful, purposeful, time-based engagement, uh, contents relative to when they want to know something. Well, I like what you guys are doing. I like this next-gen architecture. It's definitely been validated. You see in the rise of Amazon, Microsoft shifted their business model to the cloud, and you're starting to see other ones, other people shifting, IBM shifting to the cloud. So they're all shifting to this new business model. So for you guys, Sixth Sense, talk about and tell me about your target market. What market are you going after? Is it the marketing automation? Is it like the sales platform? What's the, ent what's the market that you're in now, and what market are you expanding into? Uh, interesting to say that. So um, we, we're classically B two B. We obviously have a bunch of tech customers as our um, um, uh, in the account universe, but also manufacturers, uh, service businesses. We are going after the entire B two B organization because uh, the world as you know it, relative to marketing sales, is changing. And so it's not just marketing automation that we're replacing uh, or a next generation of. It's customer success. It's the sellers. Um, our customers, sales organizations, use it with their salespeople to understand insights of their accounts and how to engage. Uh, so I'd say it's that whole universe and it's that infinity loop across customer, um, uh, sellers, marketers. You know, I want to, um, just before I get into some of the business model questions and target audience, uh, the buyer, you mentioned customer success. We're seeing a lot of um, energy around what that is. It mm -hmm. used to be customer success is like customer satisfaction, support organization. Mm -hmm. You're seeing companies bring customer success much further forward into the sales and marketing process for pre-sales and or ongoing engagement as some of these SaaS environments evolve. Yep. Are you seeing that, and, it, and what's, the, what's, what's going on with this customer success? I'm seeing a lot more other than lip service. It's like, it's pretty integral in companies, organizations these days. What's your thoughts on yeah, that? Yeah, I think you know, all of us strive to be customer first, uh, customer happiness, loyalty. Um, sure, why not? I mean, that, that's, that's what we should do as, as organizations. Uh, our software actually, interestingly enough, allows customers to monitor um, how their customers are engaging with the vendor. Uh, and for instance, they may be, if we see a spike in looking at a competitor, um, the customer say, hey, are you happy? Or uh, product telemetry and usage. Um, we, we help companies track that usage and see spikes and based on that intent, uh, you might engage with your customer differently, um, you know, high or low propensity uh, to actually churn. Um, we help with churn mitigation and churn uh, management. Okay, so let's get into the product. You kind of, we're getting, we're kind of talking and teasing around the product. Mm -hmm. What is the product? What's the core jewels? What's the IP? What's the main? platform look like? What's the product? Uh, so, as mentioned, we're a big data customer company first, pardon me, um, meaning we believe it all starts with the data. Uh, because of the compute power available, we're um, analyzing data, which is your first party data, so all your historical sales and marketing outbound, maybe your CRM system, your marketing automation system, some of the systems that will continue to evolve, uh, and we'll match that um, data uh, with behavioral data. So what's happening on the web, what's happening through, you know, maybe it's cookies, email hashes, um, display account ID, advertising ID. And we've patented an approach called a company ID graph. And this ID graph is essentially this marriage of people, personas, uh, and accounts, and what's going on. And based on the insight that comes from this monitoring, you can create audiences or segments to market to, to sell to. So the insights would be on the marketing side relative to how do I parse um, my total addressable market, or on the seller side, oh, I can understand what my account or prospect might be doing today, therefore I want to execute XYZ tactic, and all led by AI. And so I got a, you a good, good point there about sales and marketing. In the old way, you had a marketing tech, tech 
and you had sales tech. Yeah. The lines have blurred, almost seem to be fully integrated now. They're one and the same now. It seems like that's the way you guys look at it. Is that true? Absolutely, I grew up in sales and marketing and you know, the old world, they didn't talk to each other. Uh, today, this is absolutely the glue, the connective tissue for sales and marketing. So you can start with, whether it's marketing or sales ops, you start with a central plan around your account universe uh, and then parse from there and segment from there. And so marketers and sellers will come up with the annual strategy, uh, but allows the conversation. So it's no longer, is my lead any good? We've got data around the lead. Uh, are, are, is the customer responding to an ad campaign? We've got data that is true, it's not, you know, yeah. maybe. Yeah, it's always the sales guys always chirping about the leads. Like, These are the good leads. Yeah, um, exactly. The leads are <laughs> from <laughs> Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, always great quote to quote that in there. Um, all kidding aside, you know, the, the end of the day, it's about customer satisfaction. No one wants to be marketed to, so there's a wave of personalization coming. Mm -hmm. And we're starting to see that now with big data, kind of set the tone on that. How are you seeing this um, new account-based marketing, account-based selling platform? Um, to deliver this kind of personalization that adds value. Because it, how do you orchestrate all that? So this is the big challenge. How do you bring that all together? What's your thoughts? Sure, so actually our platform allows for that. So as you might imagine, you mentioned the sales funnel. Um, start with you know customer having initial curiosity or maybe down at the bottom of the funnel, they're in an actual buying stage through procurement. Um, based on where we detect someone is in the funnel, you would personalize the content. So if, it's, if we detect through our DGraph that the, the company or person might be interested in general awareness, uh, awareness content. If they're down in the buying cycle, uh, far down into the funnel, uh, then it's more related to transactional, uh, meaningful clips that would be more, more relevant. And that is the personalization. So it's stage appropriate um, as someone would want to consume it as they're engaging with us. Jason, give us some of the top use cases that you guys are seeing as you start to see visibility. Obviously you got $40 million in funding, third round venture, mm -hmm. um, you got customer growth, good growth. What's the visibility? What are you seeing in front of you? What are the use cases? Uh, great, so um, for the capital, I assume you mean? Um, we, we, we've had two great years. We've doubled the company two years in a row. Um, we're expanding. Uh, so it's, it's actually going to be sort of broad brush. I mean, we're expanding our field organization. We're expanding the engineering. Uh, we're looking for acquisitions that are strategic. And so our growth will be both organic and inorganic, but it's uh, because of the success and the growth, um, we want to we want to build the product better uh, to make the customer happier, and, and that is the general use. Um, All right, some so international expansion. So I'm a customer. Uh, sell me on this. What's the pitch? Um, so John, I'm a big tech company. I got fiefdoms of data. People, you know, you know, internal knife fights going on. I got this platform. We got to get the ROI out of it. How do you? I mean, what what what's the what's in it for me? Pitch me. Yeah, I'd say so. John, is your sales organization happy with the leads? Do they think it's quality? The leads are shit. The, the leads are shit. <laughs> um, we can help you there. Uh, we actually have you know, AI helping us understand your account prospects of who's pr high propensity to buy. We help your sellers. Um, it, does marketing talk to sales, John? Um, they have meetings, no one wants to attend them. I mean, this is, this is the kind of thing that goes on. We're talking about we're kind of role playing here, but in yeah. real time, you know, hey, no, we're good. It's the sales guy's fault. Yeah, exactly. They're not good enough. Exactly. So, so the leads are terrible. So, you know, there's obviously, again, this is the kind of thing that, the tension that goes on. Yeah, so that from the marketer's perspective, they're looking for a more data-driven approach to, uh, and again, data helps, data doesn't lie. You know, it's sort of math. Um, and so it's no longer speculative. It's we can see the engagement if we run a campaign, whether it be email, ads, social posts, um, uh, uh, chatbots. Uh, all of this is collecting data and showing data relative to efficacy. And that is actually what the marketer wants. And candidly, the CEO wants to see um, the result of those joint selling and marketing efforts. All right, so you got me, you got me hooked. Let's do something. How do um, your clients engage with you? What do they do? A POC? Do they just have a sandbox? Is there kind of a freemium tier? Can you explain some of the business model and engagement? Sure. Um, yeah, we, we do POCs, we do sandbox, uh, but, but interestingly enough, we can turn the data on in an hour and, and actually a prospect can see what's happening in their universe, their competitive universe or their own um, website, for instance. And so that's a very easy way in Telltale Sign to see data at work. Uh, we, you know, we have low entry points where companies can come in at 30K, uh, 20K and start, or we have you know, million dollar plus contracts that are, you know, span the breadth of sales, marketing, and customer success. So it's an easy entry point. You can grow with data, you can grow with users, uh, you can grow with models. So Facebook and LinkedIn are, are, and Twitter mainly, but mainly Facebook and LinkedIn are showing micro-targeting is highly valuable 
I mean, the election train wreck that's happened uh, this past few years, and even this year, I've seen Facebook have their own issues, but LinkedIn, a lot of people from a B2B standpoint like LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um, it's a network effect kind of distribution. You got targeting, mm -hmm. got a lot of metadata in there. So it's kind of brought up the, the conversation around micro-targeting. Why can't you just go at the people? You guys do an, a, a, an account-based marketing and sales orchestration platform, and you got these little walled garden organizations out there like LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure they're selling the data. Do they do that? Do you work with LinkedIn? So will there be more LinkedIn's where, I'm, nope, we got our data, we're going to keep it. Data becomes the key, but if they're going to hoard the data, yep. it's a problem. How do you address that? First of all, do they hoard the data or not? And if so, how do you guys get around that? Well, you know, LinkedIn's got a, a wonderful business and um, they, to degree, some of it's walled. They are a partner of ours and they're working with us and actually we'll have some announcements uh, pending. Um, so I'll, I'll save save that for later. But uh, so they are engaging with platforms, LinkedIn, from a data standpoint. Very much so, and we, we're, we're in active talks with uh, LinkedIn. Um, and it's you know I think we all want to share for the benefit of the ultimate customer experience. And we believe that you know because we have the big data, and we also allow for that micro segmenting. Uh, LinkedIn's another channel, and we want to activate every channel through our platform, and that is that is our strategy. So we allow you, as mentioned before, to be email, display, social sites. Do you guys have a program or approach or posture to the marketplace in terms of, if I have a platform, do I engage with you? Can I be a partner or am I a customer? How do you look at the biz dev or the partner side of it? Yeah, um, you know, part of the, the 40 million funding is going to allow us to uh, build out the partner ecosystem that's already in play. We work with agencies, ad agencies, we work with professional service organizations, we work with complementary software products. Um, it, we want it to be an open system. Uh, we want it to be able to bring your own data and, and we'll curate it for you to make the, uh, the AI that much smarter. Awesome, great stuff. Give a quick plug of the company, where you guys at in terms of uh, headcount, what are some of your goals this year and what are you guys looking for, obviously hiring? You said you mentioned earlier, give a quick plug for the company. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, uh, as I mentioned, we've doubled the company two years in a row. We've uh, tripled our headcount. Um, you know, we're hiring every day in every single segment looking for people, we'd love to talk to you. Uh, we've also tripled, tripled our customer base in that same period. Uh, so things are going well and we're happy and you know, I think the big challenge is just keep doing it and deliver a delightful experience for customers. It's interesting, companies can be very successful, Jason, if they have a certain you know, view. You guys are data first, you got a horizontal view of the data, but yet providing a specific unique solution differentiated off that. Uh, we're video first, that's our angle. A lot of people having virtual first. You're starting to see this new kind of scale Mm -hmm. at, with companies. So I want to ask you about your vision for the next uh, few years. As you look out, as the wave is coming in, it's very clear, cloud scale, the role of data, machine learning and AI is going to build this application layer that has to be horizontally scalable, but yet vertically specialized for the use cases, mm -hmm. which requires a very dynamic data intensive <laughs> environment. What's your vision over the next few years? How do you see the world evolving? Because there's a lot of big, companies or in, in startups that have been around doing a lot of these point solutions, their features. Yeah. How do you see this next wave going the next five years? Um, I had a thesis three years ago uh, joining the company that uh, these point solutions would go away because they weren't data driven. Um, you know, the, the hard work is in the large data, the applying the uh, ML and AI on top of that and then doing something. We surfaced that in applications. For, so for the last two years, we've been uh, building the apps that allow a marketer, a seller, or a customer success organization to prosecute that data, understand the data, and let a AI recommend a tactic. Uh, so I think it'll just be more of the same, but specialized by use case. So where some of our applicability is generic use cases, we'll get specific to telecom on that use case. We'll get more specific in customer success, enabling churn mitigation, uh, as opposed to just sellers and marketers. That's awesome. And you know, you look at the current events, I got to get your expert opinion. Um, Donald Trump, the Democrats, they've been using social platforms, political ads are being kicked off, but there's a lot more innovation that they're actually doing. So with all that bad actors out there, there's actually an innovation story that's going on under the covers. What's your view of that? I mean, I mean, the, uh, the bad stuff's out there, but they're leveraging the new architecture. I mean, I Facebook's think, on I record think, saying think, that Donald Trump ran the best campaign ever, uh, which I, is I, why he's winning. That, that's the story and backstory is sort of history unfolds and we understand it is that these, the uh, election cycles have leveraged data to run their campaigns and it's the new world. And so uh, while there may be bad actors, I think hopefully the, the world is a majority good 
Um, and much like our stories, we're trying to bring a data solution that helps dis decisioning. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the political campaigns are leveraging it too. Yeah, and it's, it's disastrous to see the applications fail like they did in Iowa, but the data is there. I mean, it's, it's about time. Yeah. I always say it's going to be on blockchain, and uh, Andrew Yang is, just recently came out and said, oh, the voting should be on blockchain. <laughs> Maybe that's going to happen someday, we'll see. Jason, thanks for coming, I appreciate the conversation. I appreciate the opportunity, thanks John. Jason's in tech here, the CEO of Sixth Sense, uh, industry veteran, uh, big pedigree, big company with $40 million in fresh funding, talking about the next generation platforms. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching.